everyone, and uh, welcome to the Monday, August 22nd meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. We will begin this evening with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. A uh, couple of announcements I have, but I will ask the board if anyone has an announcement they'd like to make. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to note that uh, Selectman Bolter is not with us this evening. He is in Kingston attending the Plymouth County Water Resource Meeting. As you know, we have a lot of issues with our water, and especially the drought. And so Bill is our representative there, and uh, he's at their meeting tonight. Um, we have the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 vigil. Please come and show your support of our military, fire, police, and their families on Sunday, 9-11, at 4 p.m. on the Pembroke Town Green. Dan Clark, the singing trooper, will be performing. And this is sponsored by the Pembroke Military Support Group, the American Legion Post, uh, 143, and you can RSVP by September 1st to cedarus76 at yahoo.com. And this uh, will also be on the town's website. Uh, I had the pleasure of attending Troops 43 Eagle Scout Award ceremony, which was held uh, in Bryanville at the center there. And uh, Nicholas Morrison earned his Eagle Award on April 19th after watching people in wheelchairs trying to get to the basketball courts in the back of the community center, Nicholas saw the need to build a handicapped ramp, making the basketball courts handicapped accessible. He also had the surrounding area cleaned of brush and rubbish. Nicholas is the 27th Eagle Award winner at Troop 43 uh, since 2001. It was a very moving ceremony uh, and uh, was very, very well attended. The first item on our agenda tonight is to discuss a new procedure, uh, the possibility of a new procedure in our proposed door-to-door -door solicitation bylaw. Uh, Ed, you passed out this sheet. Did you want to take a minute and review that, please? Sure. Uh, for the board's information, this is a, um, just kind of like a table of contents for a bylaw that is going to be proposed for the fall town meeting as, rec as requested by the board and uh, recommended by the police chief. So basically, the um, as you can see there, it will mention to, uh, excuse me, it mentions that a, a license is required for any solicitor or canvasser that wants to engage in the business. Um, and it, and it, the provisions of the chapter shall not apply to anybody exempted under chapter 100 of the general laws. So uh, anybody from religious standpoint, there's a whole list of things that are exempt, but Anybody that's not exempt will need to have a license in order to uh, solicit door-to-door -door in, in town. What kind and of license? 
export what kind of license? To to uh, to solicit door to door. A door to door solicitation license. Yes. I just wanted to be specific. Right. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be spelled out. So there'll be a definition of what a solicitor or a canvasser is. Uh, there'll be an application process, um, starting with uh, applicants filing with the chief of police. Uh, public hearing notice and the issuance of the license provisions in the next section. Uh, revocation, expiration and renewal of such licenses will be addressed in, in se sections of the bylaw. Um, there would be a clause about misrepresentation where no solicitor license or exempted from license may represent in any manner. The buyer's right to cancel is stipulated in uh, chapters 9393A and 255 of the general laws, and that will all be referenced in the, uh, in the bylaw. Uh, there will be a no solicitation list. Um, we mirrored that off of uh, several bylaws and, and laws of uh, cities and towns in the Commonwealth. Um, that it will be placed on the w town's website after the passage of this bylaw, and that the uh, um, the police department will have this list and so that that list will be given out to anybody that is going to be soliciting uh, that has a, gotten an approved license from the Board of Selectmen. <clears throat> uh, obviously, you know, part of the bylaw will be uh, penalties for trespassing on property where a person uh, has displayed a no trespassing or no soliciting sign according to the town bylaw. And uh, there'll be penalties associated with any violation of this. There'll also be a second bylaw that'll be uh, proposed by the chief of police to allow the police department to charge for fingerprinting for um, any prospective uh, licensee. And this is consistent with the bylaws in many communities that have a bylaw that deals with the door to door solicitation. So, um, that's in summary of what is in store um, for the uh, fall town meeting. But do you have any questions for Ed at this time? No questions, just a comment that it's a, a bylaw to finally satisfy uh, uh, this board. What this board wanted to do is come up with a, a policy that had more teeth to it than simply uh, a board of selectmen's policy. So uh, I'm certainly in favor of a, a town bylaw that has um, has controls, uh, controls over the, the folks that do go door to door, and it uh, pr protects the public. So if someone wants to go door to door, they really need to um, uh, uh, m make an effort to do it and really want to, really want to and need to as part of their business plan to go door to door. So I, I think it, um, it, it helps the Board of Selectmen do our job in, in serving the citizens. I would agree with that completely, and I think we've uh, made some good progress on this. Uh, we do have an appointment at 7.15. Uh, let me just skip ahead for a moment, if I can. We had a recommendation from the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals that James Gallagher II be appointed a member of the Zoning Board as expeditiously as possible. And this letter, which we received Friday, is signed by William Cullody, Frederick Gathavan, and Linda McDonald. So they need our action tonight. And uh, because it wasn't on the agenda, uh, I agreed under the circumstances. Uh, they're a very busy board, and they have a lot of important issues that come up before them. And uh, they really need to have uh, James Gallagher uh, to fill in a vacancy on, on their board. So I would uh, bring this to the Selectman's attention tonight. Mr. Chairman, I would move the appointment of Mr. Gallagher uh, based on the recommendation of the three sitting members. 
A motion by author. Is there a second? I second. Second by Matthew. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, it's four to zero. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for taking that out of uh, order and uh, not being on the agenda. Um, we have Mr. Dement here with us tonight. He's scheduled to speak to us at 7.15. If uh, you would like to come up and talk to us uh, sure. right now, a couple minutes early. Sure. Thank you. Want to introduce yourself again? I know you've been sure. here before. So yeah, I'm Steve Diamond. I uh, moved to Pembroke back in uh, June. So, you know, yeah, yeah, June of this year. Um, I work for Trinity Solar. I'm the district manager there. So um, I want to apply to go door to door, solicit in Pembroke, the town that I live in. Um, so. I know you, as I said, you've appeared uh, before us before. Yeah, I've, I've been here before. And the I board has had an opportunity to ask you questions, but I Is would ask the board again if they sure. have any questions for you. I have a question. Sure. So last time you were here, you talked about how your business plan is to lease solar panels to people mm -hmm. on their houses. And I had a, that's through interest rates, right? And collect the yearly interest. So um, it's not actually a lease. I mean, we, we do do a lease, but the primary product that we sell, it's called the PPA, stands for a power purchase agreement, where um, sorry, uh, say you were the homeowner, uh, you guys are already buying your electricity from Eversource or National Grid. This, um, we put their, the panels up on the roof, no cost. They don't have to pay for the installation, permits, maintenance, and they're just buying their electricity off their roof at a cheaper rate. So power purchase agreement, they're just buying their electricity off their roof, so they're agreeing to do that. Um, the interest rate that you talked about, what, what was that? Like, the in terms of like a lease? Yeah, I wasn't sure how, how your uh, financial structure Yeah, was. we do like a, um, it's a 20 or 25 year agreement, power purchase agreement, and we do uh, fixed rates or variable rates, but um, there's no like interest or anything like that. It's just the rate that they're paying for the electricity. Right now, uh, customers in Pembroke are paying around 18 to 20 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity, and we charge, our rates are about 40% um, to 50% cheaper with the solar panels and they don't have to pay for the install. So now if someone opted to go with the variable rate and the price of your solar electricity went much, much higher than the average rate of electricity, would they be forced to pay that? So um, so it takes us about 15 years to catch up to today's utility rate. Um, and that's if the utility rate doesn't go up at all. Um, if the utility rates, I mean the reasons why the utility rates go up every year is one because the grid is old, it's costly to maintain, it's inefficient, um, and it's expensive to bring the electricity here because we get a lot of our supply from Canada. So they're going up on average six to eight percent per year, and our rate only goes up by two point nine percent. So um, it takes us about fifteen years to catch up to the utility rate today. So I mean, the odds of us exceeding. Um, ever source of national grids rates are very, very, very slim. All right. Does that answer your question? Yes. Cool. I think we may have asked this question the last time you were here. Sure. But if someone uh, had this installed, mm -hmm. as you described it, and after they were in the plan for five or ten years or some period of time that was less than the lease period, and they wanted to sell their house. Can yep. you tell us how that would work? Yeah, so there's um, there's a couple different options for the homeowner. So one, they could just transfer the agreement to the next homeowners. That's the easiest and smoothest option. Um, they could also take the panels with them to their next house, but they'd have to pay some fees for removal and reinstallation, or there is a buyout option, which in our agreement it shows what the amount is per year for the buyout. So. What is the average buyout option? Um, I mean, it depends on how many panels we put up for an average system. Um, it would probably be around 25 to 30 panels. It would probably be uh, 15 to 20 thousand dollars to buy it out. But I mean, my parents they live in Lemonster, 
and I've had a few other customers this year that have sold their house within a day with the solar panels on it. So typically that's the easiest thing to do if you're going to sell, just transfer the agreement to the next homeowners. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Is your company public or private? Private. So are the majority shareholders from America, or where are they from? No, yeah, we're uh, we're American uh, company. We're based out of New Jersey, privately owned. Um, been in business for 22 years. Our owners they started the company in '94 as a HVAC company, and then they saw like the trend kind of before it was a trend. 2004 we became Trinity Solar. Um, yeah, we're all Northeast based, so Massachusetts. Um, Rhode Island, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, uh, Delaware, you know, we're trying to get into some other states, but um, we're the fourth largest solar company in the country, and then we're the largest privately held solar company, so we're proud we don't ever want to go public or anything like that. Where are your solar panels made? Um, I mean, we use, <coughs> like, for, like, if a customer wanted to buy uh, a system, they have more options where they can, we can kind of get any kind of panels they want. For the panels that go on the PPA, which I was explaining, those are uh, Canadian solar panels. So I get, I don't know where they're made, but Canadian solar, they're probably made somewhere, not in China, but somewhere uh, out that way. Well, all right, and another question is, have, the, have these solar panels been linked with any sort of radiation or any other potentially harmful health risks? No. Not that I'm aware of. I've done a lot of research on that stuff, but no. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions from anyone? Then I would entertain a motion. I would move, Mr. Chairman, that we approve the door-to-door uh, -door permit request of Steve Diamond of Trinity Solar uh, with the approval of the police chief, a um, favorable Corey report and restrict the hours of uh, Monday through Friday from 9 to 5, Saturday from uh, 10 to 5, and Sunday from 12 to 5. For a period of? For a period of six months. I second. Motion by Arthur, seconded by Matthew. Any other questions? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, uh, no. The vote is 3 to 1. Thank you very much. Been approved. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Good Thanks, luck. Isaac. Good luck. Be respectful, please, because it's a it's a it's a touchy subject in town, and yep. some people have some valid fears and concerns. So uh, just please be respectful. So I believe that I um, pass a quarry check with the police chief. I don't know what the next steps I'll are. Follow up with you okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Right. Uh, the next item is. Uh, a request from uh, Dan to reduce uh, the members of the Town Government Study Committee. Dan? That's right, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a Town Government Study Committee, uh, and we have uh, had difficulty uh, filling all of the seats. And in order to uh, have a better chance at making a quorum, I ask this board to reduce the committee from nine members to seven members. Anyone have any questions for Dan? Uh, so I'll put that in the form of a motion. Motion I'll second it. To reduce the government study committee membership from nine members to seven. Second. Seconded by APA. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that's four to zero. And Mr. Chairman, with that, I'll just put to the public, uh, with the seven members, we still have one seat vacant. So if anyone would like to join, uh, please call the Board of Selectmen's office and apply. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, item on the agenda is to consider the appointment of Matthew Queenan, 66 Wampatuck Street, to a three-year term on the Pembroke Herring Fisheries Commission. The term will expire June 30th, 2017. Are there any questions from the board? Hearing none, I'm looking for a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, I would move the appointment of Matthew Queenan of uh, 66 Wampatuck Street to the Herring Fisheries Commission. 
Motion by author. Is there a second? I second. Second by Matthew. I think it should be said that it's an alternate position, it looks like, too. Is that right, Sabrina? I believe so, yes. Mr. Bolter brought this in for appointment, and they do have the alternates with seat vacant, so. Okay. They are moving James Hackett up to full membership. Mr. So this, this vote will be uh, to establish him as an alternate on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, I'll amend my motion. Motion, uh, amended motion accepted. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed, hearing none, that's four to zero. Uh, next item is to consider a one-day liquor license for the Repu uh, Pembroke Republican Town Committee to be held at the Pembroke Historical Society building on September 17th from 6 to 9 p.m. They seek to serve beer and wine, and they will be open from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Mr. Chairman, I would move the uh, approval of a one-day liquor license, uh, that being September 17th, for the Republican Town Committee. Motion by Arthur. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dan. Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, uh, four to zero. Thank you. Uh, next item is the Pembroke Education Foundation is looking for approval to have a Boontacula Road Race Sunday, October 23rd at 9 a.m. It's a 5K road race. It's the fifth annual race to benefit the Pembroke Public Schools. Traffic and safety details will be coordinated with the Pembroke Police Department and parking with the Pembroke Public Schools. Are there any questions? Hearing none, is there a motion? Motion to approve the use of the town roads for the uh, Pembroke Ed Foundation, date of October 23rd. Motion by author, is there a second? I second. Second by Matthew. Any other questions? Are you none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that's four to zero. Uh, next item is to consider uh, three sets of minutes at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. The first set of minutes is from our meeting of July 25th of this year. There are motion. I would move uh, the minutes by 25th. Second. Motion by Arthur, second by Dan. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's four to zero. The second set of minutes is from the Board of Selectmen's meeting of August 1st, 2016. Mr. Chairman, I would move the minutes of August 1st. Second. A motion by Arthur, second by Dan. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing uh, any opposed? Hearing none, that's four to zero. The third set of minutes to be approved from the Board of Selectmen's meeting of August 8th of this year. I would have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would move the minutes of August 8th. Second. A motion by Arthur, second by Dean. Any questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that's four to zero. Uh, we have uh, old business. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Dan. Uh, I brought up under town administrator's report uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, the citizens' uh, uh, concern uh, regarding the Board of Assessors. I reached out to the Board of Assessors and, and got uh, some, some great information that were very helpful to me and uh, provided uh, the public information that was available. Uh, but there is there is some more information that uh, I would like to see, and uh, and the person that wrote the town the asset the selectmen uh, who had the town of uh, uh, the asset the selectmen issue uh, asked me to further uh, uh, reach out to the board of assessors uh, as board of selectmen through a letter. And uh, what I would like the board to do tonight is to allow me to speak with. Uh, the town administrator Ed Thorne, 
and town council on uh, drafting the language of the letter and then bring that drafted language to this board for review. I have, uh, I have a, a, a rough draft uh, that I could present, but I don't think it's ready for prime time. So I would like to review it with town administrator and town council uh, before I present it to uh, the Board of Selectmen in, in, a, in a public forum, if, uh, if this board would vote to allow me to do that. I, I'm a little familiar with the issue, um, having attended an assessor's meeting, and uh, I think uh, Dan, what Dan wants to do seems very appropriate to me, and uh, I think it's a, a good idea to, as Dan has said, uh, to take his draft and uh, discuss that with uh, Ed and Koppelman and Page if necessary. And so uh, I'll entertain a, a motion to move forward with that. Dan, did you um, I, I move that the board allow me to uh, speak to town administrator and town council regarding uh, the language of the letter. I second. Second. Now, motion by Dan, seconded by Matthew. Uh, all in favor of that action? Aye. 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 And, and it, hearing none. And, and, and I will say, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 it's nothing nefarious or anything like that. It's, um, uh, I just want to speak to the town administrator and town council uh, uh, to make sure I, I, I protect the town and, and nothing um, Protect the town's interest. Okay. Uh, any other? Uh, well, we've got, got old business. I think uh, Ed has something on old business. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm asking the board to vote to um, to uh, on a motion to accept uh, the parcels of land located at 369 and 385 Washington Street. From Jane Benson, uh, this property that was authorized by, excuse me, um, annual town meeting uh, will close on uh, August 29th. So, Arthur, if you would please read that motion. Okay. Move to acquire and accept the three parcels of land located at 369 and 384 Washington Street from Jane Benson, trustee of Mija. Realty Trust in accordance with the vote taken under Article 5 of the May 6, 2016 Special Town Meeting. Second by Arthur, second by Dan. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Every none? Four to Thank zero. Thank you. I'll have you folks sign this at the conclusion of the meeting. Thank you, Ed. Uh, the Town Administrator's report, Ed. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going to um, defer that to um, new business. Okay. So, under Ask the Selectman, does uh, anyone have an Ask the Selectman issue? Mr. Uh, Chairman, I did receive some emails, and I think you want to make comment on that? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. Uh, we, have, uh, we have an email. Uh, and I'll read uh, a message uh, given to the Board of Selectmen. This past Friday through Sunday, Boston Sky Dives airplane has passed at various low altitudes directly over my house approximately 100 times. It is my understanding that under pressure from Hanson residents, he agreed to alter his flight route. Now it's directly over Pembroke. He takes off at Cranland in Hanson, and from Cranland, uh, I'm uh, sorry, uh, he takes off at Cranland in Hanson and immediately turns left and does his climb and descent over Pembroke residence houses. Hanson profits from Cranland, and Pembroke does not. Why should we in Pembroke have to bear the noise and danger? of his constant flying over our homes. On Saturday, he first flew over my home at 7.40 a.m. and then finished approximately 12 hours later. On Sunday, he started at 10 a.m. and continued all day. This is not a burden that should be ours. 
and uh, the gentleman is asking this board to look into this issue. It's a legitimate uh, concern and complaint, so I think we should look into it. Mr. Chairman, I reached out to the town administrator in Hanson today, and I'm awaiting a reply regarding the comment that the resident made regarding the... So after speaking with the town administrator in Hanson, we'll get some additional information, and uh, when we have uh, some more positive answers, uh, we will get back to the resident, and uh, we certainly, uh, I, I think I can speak for the board in saying that uh, I, I don't think I'd like those planes flying over my house all day Saturday and Sunday, and if it's a hundred times, that's an awful lot. So we will definitely look into this, and we will respond to the person under the terms of our Ask the Selectment agenda item. Uh, there was another um, Ask the Selectman question, and that concerned uh, the flag that is at the Crown Castle, Castle International Corporation leases the tower and raises the flag on or just after May 1st and lowers the flag on or after November 1st. The question was, um, the flag it should be a 30-foot flag uh, that we're used to seeing. However, a recent high wind storm tore the flag from its housing, and it was subsequently removed and temporarily replaced with what is now a 15-foot winter flag until unsettled weather has passed. So we are in touch with them over the flag, and they will return the 30-foot flag to its housing. And it may be up there. I, uh, I failed to check that on the way over here tonight, I'm sorry to say. But we will stay on this and make sure that the proper flag is flying from that location. Uh, new business. Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to make the board aware of uh, a, uh, a section of the Act to Modernize Municipal Finance and Government, which was uh, signed on August the 9th, 2016, and one of them deals with the approval of warrants by a multi-member board of selectmen. And uh, this allows uh, boards of selectmen to designate one of its members to review and approve bills or payment warrants with a report provided at the next meeting. So basically what the board is facing, and we have a couple of weeks coming up where the board is not scheduled to meet. And so we're requesting that the Board of Selectmen designate somebody to sign the uh, payroll and accounts payable warrants on uh, August the 30th and September the 6th or 7th, or more preferably the uh, September the 7th, which is two days after Labor Day. So, um, so with uh, some vacations coming up, um, and we're asking the board to designate somebody to be able to sign those warrants the next couple of weeks until the board meets again on September the 12th. We have uh, anyone that could do that? I'm generally around you know, either morning or afternoon. I'd be glad to do it if nobody else uh, is available. So moved. <laughs> I walked right into that, didn't I? <laughs> I could, uh, I, I would, vol I could volunteer to do the uh, August 30th. Yes, sir. Uh, if, uh, but I would not be available uh, Labor Day week. Mm -hmm. well, why don't you take August 30th, and I'll take Labor Day, and we'll. All right, that sounds we'll good. Share it. Okay. So I'd like to have a motion to that effect. You make right. that motion, Arthur? Yeah, I would move that um, the uh, warrants be signed by a uh, representative member of the board, uh, that being Lou Stone for August 30th, and uh, it would be uh, me for September 7th. Second. Motion by Arthur, second by Dan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. I declare that passed. Thank you. Um, under new business, 
Anyone uh, else have anything? Well, we have a new plaque that um, came. I don't know if you mentioned that. I was at the Board no, of Health yeah, meeting. Go ahead, please. Well, um, we had in, uh, in town on Tuesday uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General Joseph Dunsford, who came to Pembroke uh, while he was summering in Marshfield. And he is a uh, Quincy resident originally, so he's got some native roots to Massachusetts. But he was here and dedicated the uh, plaques that you see on the wall to uh, two soldiers that we lost in uh, Iraq, uh, Brian McPhillips and uh, Matthew Bean. And it was, um, it was quite a crowd. Um, I have never seen so many people in Veterans Hall at one time. And um, he was an impressive person to meet. As I, um, as I told my wife, I said, I, I've never met anybody as high ranking as the general or as uh, important to the activities of the world as, as uh, General Dunsford. So that was, uh, it was very nice of him to take time out of a, um, you know, a busy schedule and a vacation uh, day to uh, come to Pembroke and, and um, basically, uh, you know, give us a, um, you know, a, a, a first-hand look at, at what uh, goes on uh, behind the scenes. And um, he was terrific. I, I think uh, everybody who was here would agree that, um, you know, he spoke like he lived in Pembroke all his life, and I, I don't think he's been here before. So he studied, uh, as, as you would expect uh, somebody in his position would, and, um, you know, it was a very moving, uh, it was a brief ceremony, but very moving, and um, it, it shows the, uh, the touch of class that uh, Dave McPhillips brings to the uh, Veterans Office, and um, it, it just was, was great. The police and the fire were terrific, and it, it couldn't have gone any nicer, I don't think. Yeah. I would agree, uh, Arthur. I was fortunate enough to be here myself, and it was a very impressive ceremony. Certainly, the general was just an amazing person to think that a man of his stature would be right here in Veterans Hall. But I think uh, David McPhillips, our veterans agent, did a wonderful job arranging this and uh, speaking with the military and uh, coming up with what they needed to have from him to have the general be here. And uh, uh, I think I'd like to thank Ed Fawn for being involved with kind of sprucing up Veterans Hall. I think it, it really looks great. It's a big improvement. And, uh, but all in all, it was a wonderful day for the town. And uh, the general wasn't anything like I thought he would be. Uh, I don't know many generals. But I just thought uh, a man in his position, uh, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, I just pictured uh, a different person. But um, obviously, when you uh, look at his background and what he's done and his education and his uh, 39 years of service in the Marine Corps, uh, he's the guy for the job. So again, it was uh, a great event for the town. Anyone else? Um, I have a, a night that I was interested in reading this uh, article in the Globe South. It's from Duxbury. Duxbury selectmen have written state leaders to let them know that they too are against ballot question four, legalizing marijuana for adult recreational use. We are presently dealing with an unprecedented substance abuse crisis in the form of opioid addiction. This is no time to legalize a gateway drug in the face of this current epidemic, the selectmen said in their letter to Governor Baker, Senate President Rosenberg, and House Speaker DeLeo. Selectmen said they wanted to add their voices to those opposing the state ballot initiative. So uh, I happen to agree with that, and uh, I, would, uh, I would like to propose to this board 
that we join Duxbury and uh, issue a letter uh, being opposed to uh, ballot question four. So, would anyone have any comments or uh, opinions on this? I, I, I agree with the, the chairman. I believe that the legalization of marijuana would have very, very negative effects on our community and the surrounding communities of Massachusetts. Mr. Chairman, uh, I just attended on Sunday family, Pembroke Family Fun Days, and it was sponsored by the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce. Uh, in, in part of the, uh, the receipts of, uh, of the program that day, we're going to uh, Pembroke Titans Against Drugs. Uh, and you know that group has been doing yeoman's work trying to educate the community and, and, and help the community for this uh, insidious opioid addiction. Uh, and part of that issue, part of that problem, is a gateway drug like marijuana. Uh, for some people it's, it's harmless, uh, but for others it's, uh, it's a step in the wrong direction. Uh, Massachusetts has already uh, decriminalized small amounts of marijuana. Uh, we already have mar medical ma marijuana facilities. Uh, so to decriminalize marijuana is, is sending a, the wrong message, especially in this fight against the uh, opioid addiction. Uh, a, a, a fellow that I work with today, uh, spoke with today at work, went to two wakes in Duxbury for overdoses on Saturday. So um, not that you'll overdose from marijuana, but it's, it, is, it is seen as a gateway drug, and there are already provisions in the state of Massachusetts uh, for decriminalization of small amounts and medical marijuana. So uh, to, take, to take the step of decriminalizing it uh, and then face the uh, consequences of what you see in, in Colorado, uh, it's, I was listening to uh, Karen Polito, Lieutenant Governor today, on the way in, she was speaking uh, on WATD about this very subject and her and, and, and Governor Baker are completely opposed to the legalization of marijuana and she went on to speak about Colorado of how the the administrative costs of of, of dealing with the legalization of, of marijuana over there are overwhelming the state the the taxes that they get uh, are, are far beneath what the administrative costs are, especially since it's not all smokable marijuana. It, it's food and beverages, candies, and it's in trying to find a way to, to tax those that are commensurate with the administrative costs and even the health costs that come from that that we haven't even studied yet because it's so new. Uh, I don't want Massachusetts to fall into, into that same trap. So uh, all that having been said, I do agree with you. That we can send a letter. Well, thank you for that information, Dan. I, I, I didn't hear that program, and uh, I've been trying to keep up with what's going on in Colorado myself, and uh, which is another reason why uh, I would I would oppose it. And uh, hopefully, uh, the people of the Commonwealth will agree. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to uh, ask the Board of Selectmen to uh, authorize. Uh, myself and uh, Ed to work on work on a letter that would state, as I have read, that uh, this board would be opposed and uh, to uh, to that on the upcoming election. Anybody opposed to that? He wants to make the motion. I think. Yeah, I'll make the motion. I move to accept this letter. Good. Thank you, Matthew. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Dan. Any questions or other issues? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, it's four to zero. Thank you very much. Uh, upcoming issues on August 26th, uh, the special town meeting warrant closes. It's a very tight window, and I would urge anyone who is interested in proposing an article 
uh, of the special town town meeting uh, to uh, get it into the board of selectmen's office. We have a need for executive session, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. Will uh, somebody read that motion, please? Mr. Chairman, I would move we enter executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. It's regarding uh, all the uh, unions. A motion by offer. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dan. A roll call vote. Dan? Yes. Matthew? Yes. Bob? And I vote yes. Uh, we will not be coming back into open session to take any votes or conduct any other town business. So uh, we will be leaving you to go into executive session. And uh, before we go, uh, thank you for watching. And the next regularly scheduled meeting of this board will be September 12, 2016. Have a happy and safe Labor Day. Thank you.